Hello, everybody. This is Ableton Live certified trainer and DubSpot instructor, Thavius Beck. Today, I'm going to talk to you about my own personal way of chopping up samples in Ableton Live. One of the beautiful things about Ableton is that it gives you a variety of ways to do the exact same thing, depending on your preference and your workflow. So I have a session set up with a drum break that I've warped. I'll play this for you really quick so you can see what it is. And if I turn on my metronome, you'll see that it's warped so that it's on beat. So what I want to do is I want to be able to isolate the kick, snare, and hi-hat from this drum break so I can create my own drum pattern and not have to rely on the loop. What I typically do is I take my audio. Once I have it in an audio clip, I'll duplicate that clip and have each clip start where I want a certain isolated sound to be. For this, I want a kick, a snare, and a hi-hat. So my intention is to have three or four different audio clips that start at the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat. So let's do that. All right, we have our first clip here. I'm just going to duplicate this, Command-D. So I have an identical clip. I'm going to make this start on my first kick drum, and then I'm going to loop a small portion after that, okay? So I just grab my loop bracket, slide it all the way down. Now I'm going to loop the end portion of this, but it's going to start on my kick, okay? So now it starts on my kick, and it's looping a hi-hat. So now... I'm going to go to my first audio clip. And the reason why I leave this here is so that I can always go back to my original loop uh, and then isolate pieces from there. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier in case I mess up. I don't have to try and figure out the original warp markers or the original timing of my uh, first audio clip. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'm holding down Option. While I'm holding that down, I click on this clip, drag it to another slot. So now I'm going to isolate the snare. Okay, I want this to start on the snare and then maybe loop a small portion after so again, right now I'm just dragging my loop bracket with the start arrow and starting on the snare, changing the end of the loop. Now I just loop this little part of the hi-hat, but I'm going to move my start arrow back to the snare. Okay, so I'll start on the snare and then loop the hi-hat. Now again, you may not always want to loop the end of a certain slice. I prefer to do that because I like to sort of add syncopation in there, uh, certain happy accidents you can stumble upon when you loop a certain portion of the end of a snare or a kick or you know any sort of sample. Uh, but again, you might not want that. So it's very easy to just make this a one-shot sample as opposed to making it a loop. Uh, you can just turn your loop off and just bring your end point close enough to your start point so that you only get what you want. Okay, so now the snare is being treated more like a one-shot. So we're going to keep that there. I'm going to duplicate this, though, because I also want a snare that's going to have the hi-hat looping at the end. So we'll bring this endpoint back out. We'll loop the bad boy. And now we got a one-shot snare, and then we got a snare that loops with a hi-hat. So last thing I want now is I want to isolate uh, just a hi-hat by itself. So I'm going to duplicate this last clip. So now I have an exact copy of that snare with a hi-hat loop at the end. There we go. But I'm going to grab a different hi-hat. This right here. Stretch out this loop. I'm going to zoom in a bit and just make sure that the timing is how I want it. Okay, cool. And actually, it might be kind of cool to... Uh, double the tempo, which is going to make this sample play twice as slow. So that way, this hi-hat will be stretched out and it won't be looping as often, okay? So we have these two buttons here underneath our segment BPM where we can actually multiply the tempo by two and divide it by two, okay? By multiplying it by two, it's going to play twice as slow. So if you listen to this hi-hat, now I multiply the tempo by two. So again, this is the main advantage of slicing your audio within an audio track as opposed to slicing it to a MIDI track because then your audio is still warped and you can do some really cool things, uh, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So now we have our different pieces. 
Um, again, since we're not dealing with MIDI, with a MIDI track, uh, we're not going to record this into a MIDI clip. We're actually going to record this directly to our arrangement screen here. Okay. So in order to start recording a pattern, the first thing I need to do is make sure that uh, my quantization for my clip launching is set low enough so that I can play this out more like a drum machine. Okay. Uh, typically, this is set to one bar. Now, if it's set to one bar, every time I try to trigger a clip, it's going to wait a full bar for the next one to play. That's great if I want to DJ or something. Uh, totally not helpful if I'm trying to recreate a drum beat. All right. So I'm going to set this to eighth notes. I'm going to arm my recording in my arrangement screen here by pressing this record arm button. The minute that I trigger a clip, we're going to start recording into our arrangement screen. Okay. So let's start playing around and see what we come up with. Let me turn on my metronome so I'm actually on beat somewhat. And here we go. Okay, so we have eight bars of some random drums. Let's hit tab and go over, see what we've recorded. I'm gonna zoom in here. So now you can see our little drum beat is here in our arrangement screen. Now, what makes this really cool is that from this point, I can go in here and really manipulate the audio because again, all this stuff is still warped, okay? So that means I can time stretch all these individual little hits. Uh, and do a lot of things that I couldn't typically do if it was sliced to a drum rack or a sampler. All right, so I'll just show you this very briefly. Uh, I'm going to go in here and start changing some of the parameters of these different uh, regions, okay, these different clips. I can go in here and change uh, the tempo. I can transpose them. Uh, I can do a lot of different things, okay. I can even change uh, the way that they're being warped for each individual hit. And I'm going to start mangling and manipulating this audio, all right. So just watch what I'm doing, listen to it, and you'll see the advantages of slicing and chopping your samples in this way. So again, the fact that the audio is still warped allows you to manipulate these different slices in a way that you just can't if you're slicing it to a drum rack or to a sampler. Um, so again, I like to kind of alternate between both. You know, slicing to a MIDI track, uh, it's very easy. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to just get ideas out when you're dealing with a piece of audio and you just want to get some certain sounds from it. But by taking an audio clip, duplicating it in this way, and making it so that each audio clip starts at a different point, uh, you're essentially still slicing your audio just like you would, you know, to a drum rack or to a sampler. And then your audio is still warped, which gives you a ton of options that you wouldn't have otherwise. So for me, it just gives you a very unique sound and uh, a lot of different ways to play around with what you brought into life. So I hope that helps you guys out. It's done wonders for me. Uh, again, my name is Thavius Beck, uh, Ableton certified trainer and dubspot instructor. And we've been chopping samples with Ableton Live.